Hey guys, I am in the process of transplanting some more of my abutilon that I rooted from cutting. This one's already been in the ground, as you can see. It's looking healthy. It's mainly in the shade. Abutilon, another name for it is Chinese Lantern or Flowering Japanese. Uh, sorry, Flowering Maple. Because if you look at the leaves, the leaves are maple looking leaves. So that's part of why it's called that as well. But aren't they really pretty? So I got this plant in Colorado and I brought it back with me to um, Georgia. I got it in zone 8A. So even though they are annual in Colorado, they of course are perennial, perennial here in Georgia. Aren't they beautiful? So they kind of hang like a lantern as you can see. Um, this one's more upright, but usually they hang down like this, kind of like this one. So I have two more that I dug up that I rooted, and I'm going to plant them over here. So I'm hoping to get like a cluster of them over here blooming. So I think that'll be a nice place for them because it's in the shade over here with my hydrangea over there. It gives the texture, different color variation. The hydrangea over there is more of bluish, pinkish, purplish, purplish. Then I got my... Um, butterfly bush over here which is kind of a um, purple magenta color see them over here I think they are almost the same color when they're in full bloom as the um, butterfly bush so over here I think a um, bright spot of red would be really pretty and then behind them over here is angels trumpet which I'm actually really excited and looking forward to see what they will look like once they are in full bloom I rooted them and as you can see they're sending up new shoots but the actual stem where I started the rooting definitely died back. So they're pretty healthy and growing. I just can't wait to see what they will look like in the summertime. So let's get started. I got all my stuff ready. I, you know, I dig it up from the hole. I have some biotone starters to help with um, um, promoting root growth. Got my box of soil over here because over here the soil is not as good, but most of it is basically mulch. So I'm going to dig a hole, put the dirt in it, cover it up with mulch, and let it go. And then, of course, I have my watering canteen that I water it in good once I get it into the ground. So let's get started. I am actually excited to see how this turned out. I'm sorry. It's kind of on a hill, so it's going to look kind of funny slope like that. But I think what I'm going to do is plant one here and then plant the other one here. And they actually get really big and bushy unless I want to train it into a standard tree. So I'll have a cluster of three right here. So this bed had no mulch on it beforehand and now that we're mulching it, it's like super duper deep mulch. So I'd say like six inches of mulch I think is over here so basically I just need to clear the mulch out of the way and sometimes it's easier to do it by hand which is why one of my hand has gloves I'm hoping you can hear me this far Dig a hole a little bit bigger so I can put good soil in. It's beautiful outside today, cloudy. It's humid, cloudy. It rained yesterday, so the ground is nice and soft for me. All right. Yeah, so it's about six inches of mulch I have down. Um, you can get free mulch. If you find a tree company, they are more than willing to give you free mulch. It's not always the nice mulch like this. Um, as you can see, the top section has bigger trunk chunks. So you get the good and the bad with free mulch, but hey, it's free. So you got to take it, you know, and do with it what you can. So I kind of fill up the hole. Mix it in a little bit. And basically this is what I did with the one that's already in the ground. 
build it up like that. Put in a little bit of biotone. Kind of mix it around a little. Whoa, it's warm in here. Put that in. Put some more dirt on top of it. Fill it around the root ball. Make sure it's nice and compact in. And then mulch it back over. And there you go. That's easy enough, right? And I will water it in once I get this second one put in. I think maybe right here. So I had them bring in like five loads of mulch. And my husband and I spent like two days spreading the mulch. Probably we had the mulch there for a couple weeks. Let me tell you, wet mulch is freaking heavy. And right now it's wet because we had the rain yesterday. But when it's in a pile and you have to disperse it, yeah, it's not fun. But we did it. See how these roots? I think that's from this tree that's right over here. neighbor has this big monstrous tree that provides shade over here. Ooh. Look at this. Something's growing out of there. Right, there's my hole, it's almost to the ground. Ooh. Hot and heavy job right here. Put some dirt in it. Get up a little. Be careful I don't step on this one. Biotone starter. Oh, that one just picked up. Gotta put all that dirt back in the ground. Mix it around. Put this little guy in here. And then fill it up. Put it up a little bit more up it. Compacted it in a little. Make sure it's upright. Ooh, 
Lost a little. Oh, it's getting sweaty already. It's a good sign, right? Good workout gardening. Do what you love while you sweat. Why go to the gym when I can get my workout over here lifting up dirt and soil and mulch? Put the mulch back over it. And then give it a good drink. Give it a good, good drink. And the soil is already moist, so that's kind of nice. It's not completely dried out. So just give it good water. It's going to seep all the way through. Let it sit for a moment. Water this one in. Woo wee Water in some more. Give this one a little water. Oh, water my gloves. And that's about it, you guys. Pretty easy. Another thing what you can do to promote um, better root growth is you can top it off over here, over here as well, and it'll, if you want to promote more growth root, right, root before they flower, you would just tip it off right here just so it has some time to grow over here the same way. See over here it's already got some bud, but I think the root ball system was fine. So I'm just gonna let this grow and then once it gets rooted, it'll flower just like this one. And it basically flowered all summer long until I think the first sign of frost. And then it'll go dormant again and then it'll come all the way back from the ground. But I think this will be a really nice area for it. And I got three planted, one, two, and three. Whew, that one's not as bad. We put in this drip irrigation a couple of days ago. Oh, I have all these bags I need to pick up. So, I think that'll be a good place for it. And then when it, once it mature, it'll get pretty big. I mean, it'll get really big if I let it grow, but I think I'll prune it back. Um, now, if you have a tropical place where you can leave it indoor, it can actually grow to be over, well over six feet tall and wide. But I think once it dies back in the winter time, then it'll send up new shoots. So it'll never get a chance to get like huge and massive. It'll just keep on growing with new growth. But I think that's a great place for it. What do you guys think? I mean, all of these are young plants so once they get full of course it'll fill up just like the hydrangea area over here like the hydrangea area I think I only had one or two and then I got one from a neighbor's backyard and then the rest I propagated hydrangea is really easy to propagate too speaking of that I have a couple of cuttings that I need to go and put in a medium so it can start rooting for me they're a different variety than those ones that I have over there. Even though they're mop head, the uh, flower itself is different. So, I think that's about it, you guys. Um, I might do a couple more videos today since it's so nice and not sunny and it's cool. I might do a couple more videos. So, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. 
Have a great day. Bye.